Do you need to stabilize your Sony camera's footage, but Optical Steady Shot isn't cutting it? Then Catalyst Browse could well be the answer. But what is Catalyst Browse? Well, Catalyst Browse is free software from Sony, which has a very powerful stabilization feature built in. In this video, we'll go through how to record your video correctly so that you can stabilize it using Catalyst Browse. And then I'll go through how to actually edit it in the software. How it works is your camera needs to capture gyroscopic data for the stabilization to work. Unfortunately, this isn't a feature of all Sony cameras. It's the much more newer ones, such as the Sony ZV-E10 or the Sony ZV-E1, which has just come out. I'll link a full list of compatible cameras in the description. I've used the Sony ZV-E10, so all the clips that you see in this video have been taken with this camera. You also need to use an autofocus lens. The stabilization will not work with a manual focus lens. I generally find the Sony first party lenses work the best. So the 16 to 50 millimeter kit lens, which comes with the camera should work fine. You'll also get better results with higher shutter speeds. So if you go with shutter speeds of around one over 200, you will get the best results. Anything higher than that will be even better, but I find the sweet spot is about one over 200. This does mean that you'll lose some of the natural looking motion blur that you get at lower shutter speeds, but I think this is a small price to pay to get the better stabilization results. Now, as this is free software, there are some limitations as there is also a paid version of it available. And this means you will only be able to stabilize one clip at a time. So if you've got a huge batch of clips that you want to stabilize, it may be quite a slow process, or you can get the paid version which I think you can get a trial of. So maybe you could just do all your batch processing in one go. But yeah, generally just bear that in mind that it might be quite a long workflow if you're using just the free version of Catalyst Browse. And another really important thing to note is to make sure that your in-camera stabilization or the in-lens stabilization, usually called steady shot, is switched off. And now I know this sounds counterintuitive, turning stabilization off when we're trying to stabilize our footage, but the gyroscopic data is being captured. The two features will be working against each other. So generally just keep your steady shot switched off and just let the gyroscopic data in Catalyst Browse do all the stabilization. So make sure steady shot is switched off in the menus. The stabilization does not work with 120 frames per second video or 100 frames per second video if you're in PAL mode. This is a mistake that I've made myself when I had some good smooth 120 frames per second video, which I wanted to stabilize and it wouldn't work. So yeah, definitely just make sure that your footage settings are set down to maximum of 60 frames per second, or most of the time I just use 30 or 25 frames per second footage and it will still look great. So once you've got all these settings correctly set up on your camera, you're ready to go out and shoot your footage. And once you've got the video that you're happy with, all with those settings that we've just gone through, it's time to go into the Catalyst Browse software. So once you've got footage that you're happy with, how do you actually stabilize the footage? Well, the first thing you need to do is download Catalyst Browse. I'll put a link in the description so that you can do that. And once you've got it installed, then it's time to navigate to the footage in the software. So straight away here, you can see that I've got some clips in a folder here. Now the eagle eyed amongst you might see this little symbol here. Now that means that the, these clips can be stabilized. I've put another couple of examples in the folder, which cannot, these have been taken with the wrong settings. So if you've made a mistake in the camera settings while setting up, you'll be able to tell straight away because you won't have this little stabilization button in the corner. So hopefully you've done it all right because I've made this mistake a few times, but it's all part of a learning process. But we'll go into this clip here. And you can see some of the settings that we've got here, such as the 25 frames per second, and it was recorded in 4K, and hopefully it will say the shutter speed somewhat, yeah, and the shutter speed of one over 200. So we'll double click into this clip. And here we can see, if I play this, it's purposefully pretty shaky. I remember stabilization isn't on already, so it's probably more shaky than you would normally expect. But yeah, very shaky, especially while walking around. So to stabilize the footage, you need to go to the adjustments button down here and click stabilize clip. So 
This will generate a side-by-side, -side, but you need to analyze the clip first so that you can see a preview of the stabilizations, which I'll press now. This may take a little moment. Okay, so what's the first problem you can see with this? Well, it's far too cropped in. Part of the stabilization process is that it will crop in your footage, kind of taking away the edges so that it can reconfigure within the frame. Let's move that clip on a little bit. So you can see here where I've really been shaking it around, it's really zoomed in. It will start in auto mode. We want to manually change these settings. Well, first of all, we could change the, manu the maximum cropping amount. I don't want to crop down as much as that. Obviously, I have made this footage probably more shaky than you would normally have. So if I just bring down in manual, so if I swap to manual mode and bring down the cropping amount, let's make it around this much. And you can see that it's still doing a very good job of cropping, of stabilizing that footage. Look at these moments here, which were particularly shaky. You can see as I move around there, and especially there, how well that stabilization is working. And you can also see that the, the much maligned effect of the warping that you get with the ZV-E10, the jelly shutter speed, where it's making my head look all squished and out of shape. This is fixed massively by Catalyst Browse as well. So worth bearing in mind that even if your footage is quite stable, but you're still getting this jellying effect that you get from moving the camera sometimes a little bit too quickly, this can be fixed pretty well using Catalyst Browse stabilization as well. So if you, once you're happy with the cropping amount, let's say that that is enough, and you can see that I've brought the cropping down quite a lot and the stabilization is still working great. It's time to export our footage. You can see here, before we do that, the amount of resolution that has been lost from 4K. So it's not a huge amount. So to export your footage, press the export button up here and we choose where to export the footage to. I'm gonna navigate back to the same folder that the footage was originally in. I'd also like to rename the files because I don't want to replace the originals just in case I need them further down the line. So you can either go with a prefix or a suffix, which is either a little extra before or after the file. So let's just put ST for stabilization beforehand and keep the original clip name. So that will keep the same clip name with just ST beforehand. And then you want to try and keep your footage as similar to the original as possible. So I'm going to go with same as source, the same format as the source, and the same frame size. One thing I will change is the render preset to the highest possible quality settings, because I know that was the quality that I recorded it at originally, and the crop type of no cutting of edges. Make sure that you are set to optimize image quality for the best quality footage. You can use in and out points, say that you've got part of your footage which is not necessarily required, say at the start and the end you're just moving the camera around and you don't necessarily need to stabilize that. For this example, we'll just export the lot. So once you're happy with your settings, double check them and then click export. So we're just going to export the one that we've edited there. And we'll click OK. This will take a little while, as you can see, estimated time re remaining, it's not going to tell me, so We'll jump back in once this is done. So there we go, the rendering and stabilization is complete for that clip. For a bit of context, that clip was around 30 seconds long and it took about four minutes to stabilize. So not the quickest process, but remember that was a 4K clip and it will vary depending on the power of the computer that you are using. But as you can see, the stabilization of the clip is very good. You just need to be prepared to change the settings in advance on your camera and be prepared for a little bit of the frame to be cropped. If you've enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing to the channel as it helps me out a lot. But until next time, see ya.